Welcome to the Monday, November the 6th meeting of the Design Review Committee of Montpelier. I will let members and staff introduce themselves. Uh, Martha Smirsky, Welcome member. Here. <laughs> you can really only hear Martha. How about Eric? You want to go next? <laughs> Eric Gilbertson, Vice Chair. Benjamin Cheney, member. Mer Meredith Crandall, staff. Steve Everett, member. That's it. No Liz today. Okay. At this point, we'll let Meredith review the remote meeting procedures and process. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, the share screen is really more for anybody who's watching this over Orca Media, um, but there will be information um, important for everybody who is attending remotely. All right. Can everybody see that? Okay, so um, for those of you viewing tonight's design review committee meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in tonight's discussion via the Zoom platform through either video or telephone access options. So if you want an ID, and again, I'll see you in the waiting room and let you into the meeting ID, and again, I'll see you in the waiting room and let you into the meeting so that you can ask questions um, and uh, get a little more information on what's going on. If you have problems accessing the meeting, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. Um, and I will be monitoring my email throughout tonight's meeting. For those attending via Zoom, turning your video on is optional. For everyone attending, um, if you generally, if you wish to speak, please raise your hand um, and if you have the see an unmute button, once you're called on, you can press that. Um, if not, then when um, the chair calls on you, I will unmute you if you don't have that unmute button. Um, please note that the Zoom chat function should only be used for troubleshooting or logistics questions. If you have a question or comment about an item on the agenda, please raise your hand. Um, so far tonight, all we have are um, applicants or those on the applicant's team to discuss projects. And um, we don't have any members of the public, but we may have some come in. I'll keep an eye on that. Um, please note that if um, people can't get access to the meeting, and I'd get notification of that via email, the meeting will need to be continued to a time, place, and certain. All right. Now, now hand the meeting back over to the chair. At this point, do I hear a motion from the members to approve the agenda. Uh, this is Martha. I'll move to approve the agenda. Second. Eric. All, all in favor of the agenda, speak your names. Eric. Martha. Steve. Ben still there? Ben, Ben, you that need to unmute work. yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> when I hit the space bar, it unmutes. Sometimes it doesn't. Sorry. Okay. So you're yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. The agenda, the agenda is approved. We can move forward to the first applicant for 56 College Street, Lake Point Property Management, applicant Deep Analytics, Morgan Glines. Who's there to speak for this project? That's me. I'm Morgan Blinds. I do the um, the branding and a lot of the marketing for Deep Analytics. Okay. And describe your new sign for us. Um, so hopefully you guys got the, the renders with the um, permit packet. Um, we're replacing um, a sign from an old tenant. It's the same size. It's like roughly one by seven. Um, it's it's a weird size. I had it measured in the packet. Um, the sign that was up was like a printed melamine, which doesn't really reflect what we do very well. Because um, we deal with like technology and machine learning. And so we're trying to do something a little bit more industrial. So it's... Um, like blackened wood with um, laser cut galvanized steel on top with um, exposed bolts. 
Let me know if you want me to share the application on the screen. Um, would you please, just in case anyone missed it? Yeah. Yep, they should have all gotten it. Um, so here's here's the view from the street. There's the entrance where it's going to go overhead. So it's set back quite a ways. And then there's a view of it sort of in place. By the by the way, what's the symbolism yeah. of your mascot on the sign? <laughs> um, it's an anglerfish. Um, and so um the bar, the company owner liked the way they um they live super deep down and they illuminate okay that was just okay. out of curiosity no problem are you proposing to remove the existing standing sign the, ex the standing sign i don't know what you're talking about okay there there is a sign out on the corner there in the lot um has that been removed meredith no i didn't know so. th that's a that's a ground mounted sign that's more for the the parcel as a whole mm -hmm. um and so this is just a they can do ground mounted signs and wall signs mm -hmm. they can do both and so the ground mounted sign i think reflects other tenants in the building because deep analytics isn't a whole building okay so that would stay there thank you Any other comments, questions, or suggestions from members? If not, I can go through the criteria for signs in the design con control overlay district. The size, location, design, color, texture, lighting, and material of all exterior signs within the design review district shall be compatible with the buildings and structures of the site and surrounding properties acceptable. Where appropriate, signing shall respect the original sign placement and sign bands on historic structures acceptable. If a building has multiple tenants, there shall be consistency in placement and size among all signs acceptable. It is recommended that sign placement be centered over building ent entries, and this one is. Sign installation shall minimize damage to character defining materials on the building acceptable. Sign design color and typography shall respect historic precedents where appropriate and shall be of the appropriate scale for existing and new buildings acceptable. Sign support structure shall be compatible with the building architecture. In this case, it's a it's mounted directly on the building. All in favor of the application for the sign, speak your names. Eric. This is Martha. I say yes. Steve says yes. Ben, did you speak? Oops, your microphone's not picking up then, even though you're unmuted. He's yes, thumbs up. He's a yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. I saw I saw him mouth yes when it went the first time. So I'm okay. learning to lip read. Okay, thanks. So the application is approved four to zero in favor. Thank you for coming Perfect. and good luck with your project. Thank you very much for your help. Uh, Morgan, do you want us to mail the permit out to you, or do you want to come pick it up? I can come pick it up if that's easiest. Okay, we'll um, we'll email you when it's ready. Um, we're now in the police department community room, so you'll need to get buzzed into the main building, and then we're right on your right once you come in. Um, and so, yeah, generally between eight and four thirty, we're here. But I'll we'll email you when it's all ready for you to okay. pick up. Okay. That sounds perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you're you. welcome sorry it took so long with everything no crazy in between <laughs> okay we can move forward to the next applicant for one school street applicant put in air exterior changes associated with the change of use to dwelling units is someone there to represent the application got a couple Hi. different people and there you go tim 
Yeah. Hey, Steve, it's Tim Ayer here, and I have Hi, uh, John Rayhill um, from Black River Design uh, with us as well. Okay. Go ahead and describe your application for one school street. So we're the current use um, had been um, a convenience store slash deli. Um, it's been vacant uh, for you know a little over a year, and um, we are looking to put in two apartments, two two bedroom apartments into uh, the first floor. And in doing so, we wanted to bring the exterior, you know, kind of back to, um, you know, the historic look to the building. And I believe we included, you know, John put some renderings together, what that looked like. Um, in doing so, we're going to, there's some high ceilings there, Steve. We're going to um, increase the floor um, 18 inches to two feet to try to get above the flood level, you know, from that standpoint. So that in doing that, it's going to require us to redesign the um, outdoor steps into one of the units. Okay. Can we see some of our renderings of that, please? Yep. Let me share my screen on it. Um, so here's the Elm Street view of one school street. So this entrance, the, the, is a little further on. There's some renderings of modifying this, these steps. Um, and then this is a view that Tim got for us of the existing facade, mostly off of the school street side. Um, and then this is the historic photo. And then here is what they're talking about changing the school street side to. I don't know, if, Tim, if you want to describe this, and then we'll go on to the entrance on the other side, the other details. If you could unmute John, I'll, I'm going to let him um, articulate that, please. Yeah, John should be able to unmute himself, but I'll make sure. There we go. Try that. Does that work? Yes. Can you hear me? Yep, so, we can hear you. Uh, we are uh, excited about uh, the owner's interest in uh, taking off some of the elements that were added. I'm not sure when. And um, it's certainly raising the floor 20, 18 to 24 inches creates some challenges. But I think we can uh, get very close to what the building used to look like and still accommodate the needs of the uh, privacy and uh, entrances and whatnot, really in the same way that um, they did in the olden days. Um, there's a, there are doors in and out, and there's, uh, um, and there's some horizontal divisions within the pilasters, but we're going to emphasize the pilasters and de-emphasize what's within them. And uh, I think it's, it's going to be a, a lot more attractive building when we're done. Uh, when uh, when we raise the building, we, we've got a problem of either having a landing inside the building, which takes up quite a lot of room, or I think as maybe an additional uh, image shows, there's a space between the building and the city sidewalk. <clears throat> Not, well, th while we're on that one, I think it's worth... Uh, showing that the cornice details are that are shown on the right hand uh, entrance of the building are uh, the ones that we're going to duplicate. And uh, so we've got a, a good record to copy. Uh, not that one, not that one, not that one. The one that shows the steps. There it is. So um, luckily there's a space between the building and the city sidewalk. And uh, so we can create a landing, which is a little higher and still stay within that and get people down um, off the raised floor. 
the uh, uh, Tim said there was one entrance. We have to add a few steps to the entrance on the uh, School Street corner uh, as well, but it's also within that um, distance between the building and the sidewalk. Very similar to this. John, this is Eric uh, Gilbertson. Uh, are you going to uh, not provide handicapped access to the apartments? Correct. And uh, I, I'm curious as how you're going to treat the large windows in regard to the apartments. Uh, if you go back to that first draw, there we go. Um, I did a little sketch up there in the left-hand corner. And I think the key to this is going to be to keep the <clears throat> whole interior between the pilasters a dark color. Uh, our plan is to have windows that are suitable for a bedroom um, or a living room, which affords some privacy, and still uh, maintain that the, the, the emphasis on the pilasters. So um, much as they've done in the, in the past where they got doorways, and if you look closely at the old photograph, there's some horizontals within them, but our intent was to uh, really emphasize the pilasters by keeping all those uh, variations between window and then a black painted uh, panel, a dark color. So that's what's represented on this photograph here um, with the with the lines in it. Up in the left-hand corner, I did a little diagram to show yeah. kind of our approach. Yeah, I saw that. And, and, and it, it, it's not a very good drawing in the sense of letting you know what it's going to look like. But um, if we make all those elements black, um, I think it'll be very successful. Okay. And that particular inset goes into each of these areas here? We're going to duplicate the old pilaster uh, rhythm when the behind the pilasters, which the decorative part's been removed, are structural elements which, which we can uh, build onto once we take the brick off. Okay. I think I understand. We're going to have to raise the bottom up um, a little bit because the or at least, uh, you know, the, the floor inside is going to be 18 inches higher. So that that's, again, going to be part of a uh, opaque panel. So it'll fool you from the outside. That's our that's our intent is to really maintain the uh, achieve the original character without uh, making the apartments into fish bowls. The uh, windows to the apartments operable. I think so. Yeah, we yeah we didn't talk about that, but uh, Tim, we we can make those operable. If that uh, makes sense. How are you do that without kind of destroying the look of uh, uh, yeah the storefront look. Well, I think it all has to do with uh, the the color you paint it. There's an existing uh, commercial door in the uh, School Street side. And um, that you, you can see, yeah, that's a good picture. You can see that that you can see how well that disappears. You really no, not that one. Uh, the other one. That one goes upstairs, and uh, you can see how effective that is in really receding visually, and as opposed to the one that's painted white. So that's our that, that that's a great image to show how effective the color change is going to be and i would say it, it doesn't really you know a fixed window versus an operable these days they're really the same window uh they're not fatter just that it's operable meredith is this um are we being asked to actually vote on this um so 
you have some options, right? So and and Tim them. and I discussed t yeah. Tim and I discussed this. So, um, if possible, you're being asked to vote on it. If you're not comfortable voting on certain parts of it, it'd be really good to parse those out. And I think Tim had said that he'd be willing to come back, especially for this part, um, in a in a different application. Um, but the <laughs> You know the the entrance on the um, Elm Street side. Um, there's also a railing that's going railings going in here on the River Street side that are are more safety oriented issues because they have to sort of um, raise up a platform here to because of the floor being raised inside. And then um, Tim the and then this this sort of view for the new um utility space although we had some discussions about it not being clear about how it was being attached to the building so whatever parts of this you feel like you can approve today if you can we would it would be great to get those approved um if there's any of it that you can because tim said he he could come back with basically a separate application if need be for other parts but i, I think it's going to kind of depend on what what you guys are comfortable approving and what you aren't. Um, is that a good summary, Tim? Yes. Yep. Okay. Let's talk about the Elm Street uh, entrance and how you're going to treat that. Um, uh, go? Here we go. There's a sketch that shows the raised landing, 18 inches uh, or so, and uh, obviously the the door has to be raised. You can see there's a horizontal mullion over that door that have to be raised. Um, but we'll try to keep that rhythm and the pilasters be the emphasis. I applaud much of what you're trying to do here and think that in general it all is makes a ton of sense i feel concerned that there isn't enough information in any of these sketches to really know what you're talking about uh for us to make a decision that feels anything that like <clears throat> would be fair to any other applicants that we've ever had come or those after us to say well we sort of know what they're doing here we have some gestures but i don't you know feel like we really have any detailed information here. Eric feels the same way as Ben, that uh, the details are important in how this is executed. I think it's great that you're going back to the uh, kind of the uh, opening and rhythm of the openings on the, on the school street side. Uh, but uh, I, and I'm not so concerned about the Elm Street side because I think that's, that's okay. But uh, I'm concerned about the details of how the windows are going to be divided, what kind of windows are going to go in there, whether it's going to be a double hung, uh, whatever. Because how that ends up looking, I think, is going to be very critical into how successful it is. <clears throat> Happy to uh, develop these further and get into that level of detail for you. In the process of doing that also on the Elm Street side, if you could have a representation of showing what it looks like to raise the door, is there, if you raise it, I'm not sure how far you're raising it. If you raise it, the door 18 inches, it pretty well eliminates that glass area above the door or is there something left there good question um that is you you're quite right that we have not got to that level of detail and we appreciate your uh general reaction which is uh certainly allow us to to dive into more detail and get all those dimensions and uh accurate drawings to you that would be really helpful on on that side to see what it would actually look like once you raise everything 18 inches obviously you have to put new glass in, reframe that uh as well as the doors 
And then on the school street side, it would be helpful to see what you're representing uh, for for operable windows, uh, what options there are, and and actually show that in detail as opposed to just the diagonal lines that are on the on the rep, on the current representation. Okay. So if you wouldn't mind coming back with more details so we could see exactly what that's going to look like, that would be really helpful. Do you, um, the, the other, uh, I think that's uh, fine with me, if that's fine with you, Tim. Um, the other elements which we included in the submission are the changes to the riverside and uh as meredith mentioned the uh proposal mm -hmm. to add a mechanical room take it out of the basement and put it uh between the two buildings i don't know whether you want to uh talk further about that now would you retain the existing stairs or would you just raise a platform and raise everything up uh, w what are you referring to? <clears throat> the existing the back porch? space. The ex well, the, between the buildings. Oh yeah. Not okay. The back porch. The ex the space between the two buildings on Elm Street. You're showing some new, a new room between the buildings. So I'm assuming right. you're building a deck above the flood level, based on the notes, on your representation. Yes, and that representation you can see is going to have some uh, doors in front of it so that it wouldn't be visible from the street. But to answer your question, yes, the, there's just some crude granite steps that go down right now. The fire yes. escape was removed, so uh, there would be new steps that go uh, up to the mechanical room. Um, okay. The mechanical room would be part would be attached to the school street property and not uh, serving the forty one Elm Street. Okay. Did Did you see that uh, drawing that was part of that package that shows that? There we go. That's existing. Yes. And. And also, could you? show a little more detail of what the doors are going to be as well and show the elevation. I mean, will you open the doors and go up steps to the platform? What it shows now is that the doors go down almost to the sidewalk. And is this mechanical room like a heated, like, dried in or is it just like I'm just going to assume that everybody's looking at stuff <laughs> say that again Meredith can't hear you Ben don't know what's up with your microphone now you're muted here we go oh, unmuted How about that? maybe your microphone's here we go. funky is that okay is that better <laughs> do you want to type it I mean normally you don't use chat but if you want to type it in chat I could probably read it or if you want oh. to try and call in on your phone separately for the audio. Not working. Sorry, eh? Ben. I don't know what's up with your system. Oh, is it me? Yeah. Me yeah, or John, ben? Do you want to log I can hear ben just X fine. out and then try and come back in? Wait, See Eric, you can, Eric, you can hear me? I can okay. hear you too, uh, Maybe you have a weird microphone setting. Uh, I can hear you too, Ben. Hmm. Well, so is it me you can't hear, or no? Mary, you cannot hear me. Oh. Huh. That's weird. Now I saw Tim talking, but there was no noise. All right, hold on. I can hear. Everybody. I'm gonna stop sharing for a minute, guys, because I want to check something on my. Oh, wait. Here we go. Um. Nope. I have it so that you can unmute yourselves. So that's not it.
Steve, can you talk? Yes. If can you hear me? Uh oh. And I'm showing unmuted on my end. Martha, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. And I can hear Ben too. I can't hear you. Okay. This is screwy. Hold on. My apologies. All right, John is back in. Um, so, yeah, I have no idea what anybody else said for discussion. I don't know if Orca caught it or not um, as to what everybody wants to do with this application at this point. If there's any parts that you guys feel like you can approve tonight or if you really want everything back with specification sheets and more detail. Um, I would prefer to have it come back. Oh I, don't, oh, I don't need to do that. I think you know, I think we need everything back. And one suggestion I would make is the doors on Elm Street for the uh, utility room be set back from the facade of the building. Yes, so they, that's going to be uh, – that'll be set back. We'll have a dimension for you. Oh, good. Yeah, not only the setback, but you know what is what is it going to look like? You're not going to you know, see it. <clears throat> well, you won't see it, but I mean, what are the doors going to be? Are they just flush doors, or are they paneled, or are they? Well, we yes, we'll we'll give you some detail on those doors that face the street that are sort of gates. Okay. And do you do you want to hear anything about the approach on the riverside? Uh, just I, as an introduction, it's been helpful to get your reaction to our approach. Okay, I'd rather I'd rather up. see that later. I, I had a great deal of trouble trying to understand what it was you were proposing. Okay. In general, I'll say I'm very excited to see all those weird wooden shingles go away, and I'm very excited to see the weird bricks below go away. And uh, I really, in general, feel like I'm enthusiastic that you have intentions of really taking what I think is a beautiful building and making it, addressing some of the issues that it currently has. And so, but uh, I do strongly feel that we need more clarity to be able to make these decisions and know what we're deciding. Uh, Fair enough. I'll, I'll second what Ben said. I agree. That sounds like a, a good idea to come back with just some more details so that we ha we can know what we're approving. Do, do we need an official uh, motion to table? Okay, let's make a motion. Do I hear a motion to table? I just did that. Okay, do I hear a second? This is Martha. I second it. All in favor of tabling until the next meeting or whenever they choose to come back, speak your names. Eric. Martha. Ben. Steve. So thank you for coming back with a little more detail so we have a, a much better idea of what it is we're proving and we appreciate all the effort you're making to restore this building to a, uh, a, a useful project. Meredith, when is the next meeting? November 20, I think. 14 and plus six, the 20th. When Monday. would, when would we have to have material in your hands? Tim, I don't think she can hear you. I think she's upset. She's, uh, Meredith is muted. I'll, I'll talk to Meredith in the morning. Um, we certainly will come back and hopefully be the 20th to um, continue to move the project along. And thank you for everyone's time tonight. Thank you for coming. And sorry for any delay. I know you're anxious to get this going. 
Yeah, especially the in between the buildings, you know, with uh, winter coming. But um, we'll yes. uh, we'll get you some uh, uh, more uh, specifications and uh, what the doors will look like. Okay. And are you going to have to move some of the panels and electrical work up from yes. where it is now? We will. Yes. The the you it, could it, actually oh. you could actually do that now because that's just part of the uh, the flood zone requirements. If you're replacing damaged equipment, yeah, we were going to put it in the utility new utility building that's in between the um the between the two buildings so yes. i mean if you're okay saying that we could do the platform in the building and you're just concerned about the doors that you're going to see i i'd be i'd be good with that and and yes. you know if the if the doors uh are set back four or five feet that uh, I'm not going to have a huge issue about what they look like. Um, Eric, what, and I'm trying to think, you've got 41 Elm that I think sets back a little bit further than one school. And they're not totally flush between the two buildings. Uh, and I'm, I think Meredith is maybe not hearing us, so we can't get those drawings back up. Um, but John, are you there? John? John's muted. Meredith, can you unmute John? Can you hear me? Yeah, now I can. Now Yay, can. I had to log out. Um, Cause something completely froze up and I couldn't change anything. Um, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah I can John? hear you. There's John. Okay. Um, I think uh, those buildings are pretty close at the front, uh, Tim, but the the mechanical space is going to be way towards the back. So I think people's concerns are genuine, and we will be able to, uh, uh, you know, show them that we have to get down below the mechanical space as well as, get to it so you'll actually yes. come you'll, you'll open these gates that are intended to hide the whole mess and then you'll go up a few steps to get to the mechanical room and across a walkway to the mechanical space and then you'll have to you'll have some steps that go down which give access to 41 elm so um okay. we'll show yeah. some dimensions on that and we'll show some more detail on the gates that you will sit with the general public will see okay yeah Hey John, what I'm what I'm hearing potentially is that they're okay with us doing the platform and the utility um, shed uh, and the steps going down. It's just the front doors that they want to get more detail on. I, my comment was I was hoping to get started, you know, before the cold weather for our contractors to start doing that work outdoors. But I, maybe I, I'm I misunderstanding that at all. Maybe I'm misunderstanding, you know, um, what you guys are. No, that's concerned. that's what I heard. And I'm trying to let them know that, that their concern about it being too far forward is is uh, not an issue. If you look at the plans we submitted, you'll see it's quite far back. But I agree where if you could get going on the mechanical space and get approval for that, we'll come back with some detail on what those gates will look like that people will that, see. That'd be, if everybody's good with that, that'd be great. I would. I'd be concerned that uh, gates don't swing out into the sidewalk. Yeah, uh, you know, that would be kind of a physical concern. Okay. It's noted. It, it looks like they're the distance between the bill i'm not sure what the distance is between the buildings but if the build the distance between the buildings is maybe five or six feet that that should be fine if it's set back three feet the three foot door is not going to swing out into the sidewalk yeah 
The, I like your math, yeah. Steve. It's, it's a little, very, it's a little, very, very simple. That's about first grade level. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it's it's, it's simpler to it's simpler to say than to execute because the existing steps go down immediately, and we wanted to get up fairly quickly. So that'll have some impact on on yeah. Anyway, we'll we'll, we'll look at that and come back with some uh, more detail. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, come back. Yeah, so the next the next uh, DRC meeting is in two weeks, and then after that, um, so that's November twentieth, um, and then after that is the first Monday in December. Um, so if, and if you can something. No, it says it's not finding my speaker. Oh. We hear you. We can hear you. Yeah, oh, yeah except when the would... Zoom's going to freak out. Anyway, so if you can get us something quickly, we can get you on the the, December, the November 20th. Um, and where would materials have to be uh, in your hands for the 20th? Really, preferably by the, the Monday before, if we're going to get it in printed packets for the members that get printed packets. When's the next meeting? <laughs> the first Monday of December. And when would that have to be in? Uh, so that's December 4th. So preferably November 27th. Because we're, we're putting together packets by the 29th and making sure we have copies of everything and getting them on our website. Okay, that's so, helpful. I know, you, I know, Tim, you're like, oh, I want to get everything done. <laughs> Little detail, yeah. There you okay, go. that's nope. helpful. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, just as a, a, a kind of an administrative thing, uh, do we need any kind of a motion to approve what we were just talking about in the the utility room? Uh, so what what were you approving in the utility room that was just design just review the, specific, though? Just just the platform which won't be showing from the street. The only thing showing from the street would be the doors. Right. So, so you don't, you don't actually see the platform. So that's more of a building permit item that they'll have to get tweaked. Um, okay. And, and normally we actually don't issue the building permits until the zoning permits gets issued. It's just part of our software. So I think it's more along the lines of us all having an understanding of what Tim can move forward with. Um, you don't need to do a motion because your aspect of it is continued until it sounds like the December meeting. Um unless they they get everything back suddenly so i think i think you're just gonna have a motion to continue the application to the next meeting that the applicant can submit materials for yes so, oh. so. but you oh, eric. Issue, but you'll issue a building permit for me to do the platform what well, you'll come in we'll talk to michelle Okay. <laughs> Especially because okay. the platform is flood related, right? You're having to do that because of the flood stuff. Um, and so there's a little bit more leniency on that one. Okay. Sounds great. Uh, and Eric, okay. did you do a so moved? Yes. So moved. And again, all in, all in favor of just speak your names. Ben. Martha. Eric. And Steve, so go ahead with your platform again, subject to the building permit, but otherwise we only want to see the detail and the doors that will be covering from the okay. street. Okay, great. And then the details on everything else are coming back too, right? Yep. Yes. Yep. Okay. Thank you all. One. Thanks. Thank well, you. Good luck to the rest of the meeting. I hope the microphones oh. work. Well, you you're, guys, you guys still have to be here, here for, for 41. 41 oh. Elm Street. Uh, yeah. Don't, okay. don't, don't go away. Don't go away yet. Let's see what we can get you approved for. <laughs> uh -huh. Go ahead and describe 41 Elm. John, you want to do it? Take it. Sure. Um, 41 Elm has a less uh, less changes, fewer changes. Um, the left-hand side is an existing office and will remain so. 
but if you refer to the plans, the right half uh, is going to be converted to a, uh, a residential apartment, and they are not going to change the uh, floor because they're all in pretty good shape, and they're going to use the existing partitions. So really the only change that uh, the – public will see is potentially relocating the uh, or considering relocating the existing door and changing it. And I have a submission that shows the kind of door we're proposing uh, to uh, better accommodate the floor plan of the apartment. Where's the door going? It's, let me see if I can. Hold on one sec. Yeah. Let me can um, find an image yeah. that we can talk to. So there's this. It's here. It's the hippie chickpea entrance. But let me pull up Google Maps. Um, it's a little bit clearer picture. Oh, well, there we go. That's good. That's actually uh, a good. Uh, that, image that's right fine. There. Where is it? Where's the door going now? Okay. So uh, the door is the one between the two automobiles. Yes, right there. And the only thing we're considering is uh, moving it to the other side of that recessed wow. entrance so that it makes a better uh, floor plan in the apartment. And, and you just put a window in where the door is now? We would sort of swap the window and the door. I have no problem with that at all. And, and are you, okay. aren't you also talking about switching the door to solid so that there's it's not a big you glass like pane? Yes, I, I did submit the kind of doors we're proposing uh, yeah, a four, as four panel kind door. of four panel door, but uh, just for the privacy of the uh, apartment dweller. Yes. Okay. And, and that entrance would continue to be recessed back from the sidewalk? Correct. Any comments, questions, suggestions from members? Otherwise, I'll read down through the criteria. I just want to say I'm empathetic to the project and want it to move forward and want them to swap the door. I do, in the future, wish we would get more sort of drawings that allowed us to know what we were deciding. You're going to get them. <clears throat> If you would feel more comfortable, we could wait and do all these again if you uh, would like to see that, Ben. Well, I want you to move forward on your project, and I don't want to be in the way, but I do feel like we owe it to our future applicants that we have like clarity on what we're deciding because people gesturing on screens is pretty hard to like put in the record and sort of feel like when we do get into a sticking point with somebody else in the future that we're just like, oh, yeah, well, we just kind of did this, and we agreed. I understand. Well, what we what we can do with this one is in the recommendations uh, at the end, we can say that the door is going to be swapped with the far window on the far right, and the window will be moved back. The, the existing balance will be maintained with the door just in the different position. Uh, and it will be a four panel door to replace the door that has glass in it. And then that should, that way you'll have the same appearance. It'll just be the doors on the right instead of on the left, but all, the rest of it, the balance will be maintained. I, 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 I agree with you generally, Ben, but in this case, uh, I, I don't think the de details are nearly as critical as they are on the school street side of the building. But yeah. long well, we'll leave it up the, to the architect to maintain the uh, the balance that exists now. That sounds great. Okay, and with that in mind, I'll read through the criteria for this one. This will give you something to do before the next meeting on the other building. <laughs> Thank you. Exterior, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. 
the removal of historic materials or alteration of features and spaces that characterize an historic property shall be avoided. Character defining features, finishes, and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that characterize an historic building shall be preserved. Uh, we're not dealing with any deteriorated uh, character defining features, nor any treatments that cause damage to the building. So that will be acceptable with the recommendations. Existing buildings should be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect and be compatible with the massing, size, scale, architectural features, detailing and overall character of the primary historic building acceptable. Location and appearance of all utility, utilities, mechanical equipment, trash storage, fencing, uh, really not, I'll just call it acceptable because there's nothing here that addresses that. Alterations to buildings called for by public safety accessibility and fire code shall be designed to maintain the character of the construction materials and features to the maximum extent possible, acceptable. Steve, are you filling out the right form? You have the 41 Elm Street, not the one school street? Wait a minute here, okay. Yes, the first two, we'll skip over the utilities and alterations. That one was acceptable. The only one that was not designated was a location and appearance of utilities. So on the number nine, proportion, compatibility of relationship between width and height of facades, as well as relationship of width to height of windows and doors, acceptable. Rhythm. Visual patterns established by the alterations of solid walls and openings in the facade of buildings shall create a rhythm acceptable. We're basically maintaining what was there just with the reversal of the door and the window. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, and tablature, trim, and other forms of molding or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in the alteration acceptable. Outdoor lighting fixture. Is there lighting in there now? Yes, as you could see in the photograph, and that would remain unchanged. Okay, is that overhead or beside the door or? It's overhead. Uh, I think you can, if you look at the submission, it's easier to see than describe. Okay. Um, well, if it's recessed above the entry, that could be, depending on where it's located, either in the center or over the door, that could be moved to the other side if need be by the relocation of the door. Well, there are two light fixtures sort of evenly spaced above that recess. So I think regardless of what we do, it will be remain kind of symmetrical. Here, let me show okay. you. I've got it on the Zoom on the there we go. Google Maps. They have sign they had sign lighting here. So they yeah. can angle one of those down for whichever side the door is going to be on. It's not under the overhang, it's over the Yes. Overhead. If if for any reason you needed more light at the doorway itself, you could install a recessed fixture or something, you know, above the doorway. Yeah. That'd be great. Okay, um, if you do, if you do decide to adjust the lighting, that'll be something a little bit that we'll have to evaluate that for zoning purposes. Cause there's a total um, maximum lumens per parcel. So you might want to wait on that. <laughs> You'll have sort of the pre-approval for design review, but make sure you run um, changes to the light fixtures by me. Okay. Fair enough. We could, uh, we could allow our recess fixture over the entry subject to approval for the subject to administrative approval as well. Awesome. And lastly, windows and doors on historic structures, character defining windows and door patterns, placement sizes, proportions, and original features, 
such as trim sash and molding shall be preserved to the extent possible. Uh, and it says character defining windows and doors must be rehabilitated or replaced in kind, which is fine with your proposal. And windows and doors that are not character defining doesn't apply here. So to change that door with a four panel door is fine. All in favor of the application, speak your names. Here. Ben. Yes, Martha. Steve. Did Eric? Yep, he did. That's a four. Okay. I'm sorry. I missed it. So it's approved. Four in favor. And Meredith, do you want to just describe the next step for this one? Yeah, um, I think because there are some recommendations that Steve filled out on the form, um, probably what I'll do, Tim, is have you sign the recommendation form. I'll get that back from, from Steve tomorrow. Okay. Um, and so you can either do that in person or I'll scan it and email it to you and you can just email it back before we issue the zoning permit for, for 41 Elm. Um, but I figure we'll, we'll probably see you in here to talk about School Street too. That'd be great. Okay. Found on it. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks everyone for your flexibility. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you and good Thank luck you. with your projects. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, yeah. Tim. Bye-bye, Steve. Bye, guys. Goodbye. Thanks, Meredith. See you, John. Yeah, you're welcome. We can move forward to the next application for 707 Stonecutters Way, FHS um, Holdings. Yeah, and that's going to be, I mean, it hasn't technically been opened. It's going to be tabled at this point until I hear back from the applicants. They are not in a space to have anybody attending tonight to talk about a sign. Yeah, they, they've no. got more more immediate concerns. Exactly, exactly. Um, so they'll they'll be back in touch when they're ready. Because I mean, for all we know, they're going to readjust how they do that whole site and do different different signage completely. Um, we'll see what happens with that one. Okay, has everyone had a chance to look at the meeting minutes? of September 5th, 18th, and October 2nd. Well, addressing the ones on September 5th, I make a motion that we accept them the way they are. Okay. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor, speak your names. Eric. Martha. Steve. Ben. So the September 5th is approved. Oh, wait, I wasn't there. Take me. Oh, it's it's okay. There, the majority of the people were there. So you you reviewed for typos. Yeah, we have we have the three we needed. Yep. And how about September the eighteenth? Um, I wasn't there. Eric oh. or Ben? I will. Any see. questions or changes? No. Okay, make hear a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, speak your names. Ben. Here. And Steve, the 18th is approved. And how about for October the 2nd? Um, this is Martha. I'll make a uh, motion to accept it the way it's written. Okay, and a second. All second. All in favor, speak your names. Martha. Here. Steve. <laughs> so October 2nd is approved. Thank you. And do I hear a motion, unless anybody has anything to add, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. And this is Martha, I'll second it. All in favor of adjournment, speak your names. Eric. Martha. Ben. And Steve. Meeting is adjourned and...